Croydon to me, this is home. I've moved around a lot in, in life, but yeah, I've always found myself returning to Croydon. Everything about it just represents comfort. Croydon means... A melting pot of different cultures. Family. Growth. Different sounds, flavours. This is what I know, this is where I grew up. I love Croydon. I don't really see me going anywhere too far. It's what I've known for all my life. Like when I think of Croydon now, I think that's probably the, the first few things that come to my head. Growing up in Croydon was actually really fun. It was lively. It was, you know, the clubbing scene was way better. The nightlife scene was way better. You had record stores, um, you had music shops. Big Apple Records is from here. Um, and that's one of the pioneers in garage, hip hop, drum and bass, jungle, dubstep again. And it just had a really fun vibe. The music scene was great, the entertainment was great. Croydon was the place to go. You know, it still had a bad rap, so it was kind of still run down, but it was a lot of fun. As an area, we have been the butt of jokes. So you get a lot of things, oh, Croydon is so far, you know, you've got to get a passport to go down to Croydon, nobody wants to travel down here to come and visit you. I heard those things more recently, more as you get older and start dating and then you explain, oh, you're from Croydon, and then they're like, where's that, or how the fuck are they going to get there, or it just makes it absolute no-no. But now, that like, it's become way more appealing to people to come here because of, like, Box Park, because of, like, transport links, cheaper, like, housing. Um, yeah, it's, it's not talked about as much like that anymore. As much as I was surprised to drive down Fort and Eve High Street one day and see a Costa, I wasn't that surprised at the same time. I think me living here, because I've lived here all my life, like, you know, I think a lot of people that live here are the same as me. You have this love-hate relationship with it. This, you know the potential here. We're 15 minutes away from London, Victoria, 12 minutes from London Bridge, 25 minutes from Brighton. That's unprecedented in terms of accessibility. You can get here. Individuals and families and businesses are getting pushed to the outskirts now of London because of you know, the prices of housing and opportunities, but also people choose to go to Croydon because me living there now, I've seen like such you know, like a boom in young businesses. Croydon FM to me is a community within itself. Um, it, I don't necessarily refer to the members as team members, it's more like a family and we've worked together to bring it to where it is today. The fact that it's called Croydon FM as well, it's, 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 it's privately funded by themselves and these things cost money, you know, and I know from previous experience with the whole dubstep and grime thing and all the artists that have come out of town, like, we didn't have any handouts from the council yet now, we look back and the council are shouting about all of this great success we've had. The first thing that I wanted to do is build the studio um, and get that up and running and have a live element to it. Croydon has so many different artists that are thriving at the moment, but if you look around Croydon, nowhere immediately stands out as a place where, like an origin almost. So Croydon FM represents an opportunity for us to give it that origin. If they have a love for music, um, and a love for creative arts, they can just come use the space. It's more than a radio station. It's an opportunity for, for people to learn new skills in radio production, um, DJing, and other creative media as well. Um, I feel that we filled a void that, you know, there was nothing like this prior to our, our existence. You know, the council, the government needs to recognise that the people who live and work in Croydon make the town what it is. Croydon just needs a bit of help a bit of a pick-me-up. There still needs to be obviously affordable housing for those who can't afford to live here. It needs opportunities for the young people. Croydon needs a network of support. I think for me, I would like to see more of an infrastructure in place, uh, especially in music. You know, we have like quite a big art scene here, but I feel like it doesn't include the existing residents here. It's quite a lot of people from outside Croydon coming in. Regeneration is, you know, bringing a, a, a new vibe to an area and building and creating more opportunities, but sometimes it's not. So as a developer that lives in Croydon, I understand there's perhaps some hesitation in our approach, our coming into areas, changing things, developing things, um, but that is always at the forefront of our mind when we start on any project. I feel like one day I'm going to wake up and it's not going to feel like home anymore. I'm going to wake up and feel like I'm in a different area. I'm kind of happy to see Croydon come up 
a little bit. Maybe because my mum, who bought houses here years ago, see some sort of return on investment for having a good hunch. There is a deep divide between, like, it feels like the north and the south of the borough, where the north is all being regenerated and such, and all the new businesses are coming in, and the rent is going higher, so a lot of local people just can't afford it anymore. We can see the potential of an area. From a commercial point of view, there are key factors in Croydon, which is infrastructure, connectivity to central London, green spaces. Those all provide a basis for opportunity. We've seen it happen in Brixton, we've seen it happen in Peckham, Hackney, Dalston, you name it. Where we stood, there's the Roti Master. I know that they've been there for like 10, 15 years. You know, if you're into rotis, that's the number one spot to come to, or one of the spots to come to in Croydon. You know, in the space of you recording this, most of the traders on the other side had to leave. I, wouldn't, I couldn't begin to imagine what that, what that looks like or what that feels like, you know? If Surrey Street wasn't here, I'd be out of a job. I can't see Surrey Street Market ever just being like scrapped and told to move on because it is like such an integral part of Croydon. You want things to be renewed. You want to see new things coming in. Um, not that you want to see um, anything replaced or asserted, but what, where would be your life without evolution and growth and improvement? As long as the community is involved, it can never be a bad thing as long as there's balance. I am Croydon born and bred. This is my hometown. Uh, it's somewhere I am passionate about. And um, for me, it's also about leaving a legacy that's a positive legacy. Croydon's past, we're starting to see that erased as well. You know, um, the Nestle building looks like it's coming down at the moment, which was one of the kind of icons of town for a long time, and that, especially that kind of brutalist style. Um, the 50p building's almost being embraced now when the town centre's um, knocked down for the regeneration of the Westfield. I'm sure we'll lose a lot more of that as well. I think the Westfield's going to be amazing because it's going to look great, it's going to have all these stores that are going to be super convenient for the people that live here. If it was my money to be investing into something, I'm not sure that like retail is something... I don't think that's a safe bet at the moment. It'll have the same kind of commercial shops you find everywhere, um, but at the same time, you know, it'll bring jobs in, it'll bring more business into the area. So yeah, it's hard to tell it. I'm in two minds about it. In a perfect world, I'd hope that all of this is still here, but just better. I think it will look a lot like how, kind of how Brixton is looking a little bit at the moment. Croydon probably has the most potential in Greater London to, to actually be something because the community already exists.